The Yorubas capture the alleged folly of a public conscience in the proverb, Eniba Fori Epagmo Mijembe, meaning that the man whose head is used to crack the coconut will not be able to participate in the eating of the coconut. So why break your head? But it appears that men struck by the disease of a public conscience prefer another Yoruba proverb, which is showing her, by the way, quoted again in the Wraith Lectures, which translated means sooner death than indignity. Translated to Yoruba, ikusonju ebigitalo. So for him, there's only one answer. It is that deprived of dignity, the head itself is worth nothing. And he makes the point even more poignantly when he said, for me, justice is the first condition of humanity. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let me begin by thanking the organizers of this symposium for the great honor done to me by this invitation. I must say that I have no real credentials to be a guest of honor at the 90th birthday symposium by the International Literati in celebration of uh, a, a living literary legend and also a globally acknowledged thorn in the flesh of rulers, governments, and oppressors here and abroad. But it is Wale Shoinka's versatility as a human that entitles us all to comment even authoritatively on his life and times and activities. As Ivo Agiamandua puts it in his introduction to Essays in Honor of Wale Shoinka at 80, and I quote, Shoinka has a diverse and interesting character which makes him amenable to play in different roles within society. He is an individual with different creative abilities in all genres an actor whose presence dominates a room, a university lecturer, a cultural activist, with a notion of an egalitarian sense of life, a collector of artworks, especially sculpture, painting and poetry. He's also a musician, a shadow architect who designed his own home, globally traveled, a man with a trademark tunic shirt, unable to design his own clothes, if need be, a hunter by night, and above all, a wine connoisseur. Shoinka interfered and still interferes with everybody's space. So we must not be shy to interfere with his. Today, my intervention is going to be restricted to a brief exploration of an aspect of the showing car phenomenon, what I've described as his public conscience. And my topic is showing car the imperative of a public conscience. A conscience is perhaps the most important attribute of a moral being. Without it, a person is essentially amoral. A wholly bad situation, especially because it means that a person is either unwilling or unable to distinguish between right and wrong. Most of us have a personal conscience, but a public conscience is of a slightly different order of complexity. While the personal conscience monitors and regulates the individual's own moral hygiene, the public conscience is that compelling urge to mind the business of others and to make the community's moral state one's own business. It is what compels a person to find his place as a moral agent in society. It's what keeps a person awake at night because injustice is being done to someone else and then causes him in the morning to openly challenge the oppressor in all his might and dread at the risk of everything. The individual and collective sacrifices required for nation building are impossible without a public conscience. At 90, Shoinka is entitled to take a back seat and watch others take on the issues. Before I take my seat, 
I will pray for Professor Walesho in that, whether he says amen or not. That the coming years will be years of excellent health and joy for him, and that in God's good time, the Nigeria and Africa of your dreams will come to pass. In Jesus' name. Happy birthday, Prof. Thank you.